Morning. Sorry, something's coming. Otherwise, I'll just wave this around. Someone said uh, in, in the Facebook comments, do you guys not use Bibles? You only seem to have computers. I promise we do. Our computer, uh, computers have Bibles. Anyway, it was lovely. I was sitting there during that dedication, and when it got to the part about um, parents, do not make your children angry, my wife turned to me and said, you should have gone to the class. Anyway... <laughs> What a week in South Africa. David Mabuza. Hmm. Gray listing. I'm not sure what that means. Doesn't sound good. We, uh, we had, but we won the West Indies. We, we beat them. Uh, there, there are some good things. This week, uh, we had something that uh, was absolutely tragic for the church and unbelievably powerful. We lost uh, one of our favorites, just one of the best people ever. And uh, her name was Sam Campbell. She's 29. And uh, <clears throat> the, the thing, so don't get all sad now because uh, we'll give you time for that later. But the thing about her life was uh, we did the funeral on, <clears throat> on Friday. And uh, I think there must have been, I don't know, the, the place was full. It was Grace Family Church. There must have been 900 odd people plus. It was just... The impact her life made was phenomenal. In fact, there were so many white people that uh, Jared said to me afterwards, he's, you know, a drummer, he's an Indian guy. He said to me afterwards, he said, he said, Ross, I was quite nervous that they were going to send me back to cutting cane again. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it was a, but it was, it was a funeral of special. Just, there are some special people in this world. There are some special people in this room. I don't know if you know this, but there are some people that are so special. <clears throat> There's a lady, Ruth. She's sitting right there. When she sings, you get a little bit of special. When she walks into a prayer meeting, she can take you when you don't even know what you're gonna, how you're going to end your message and just fill you with faith. It's just special. There are, there are people around you. There's that Akshan. He just, he will... Give himself to you in hospitality. I, I could just go on. There are so many unbelievably special people in this church. That little girl, Lisa, over there, she's an OT. She's very good. When she smiles at you, you just go like, ha, ah, it's a good day. She just can do that. It's special. Today, I want to help you become more special which might insinuate that you're less special now, but uh, take it however you want. This will go well if you listen. We're in our series. Um, it's called Hi, It's Me, I'm the Problem. If you haven't heard the song, I want to just read some lyrics. I have this thing where I get older, but just never wiser. I wake up screaming from dreaming. One day I'll watch as you're leaving. The rhyming gets much. But anyway, because you got tired of all my scheming, I'll stare directly at the sun, but never in the mirror. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Now, if you, if you missed the series, here's a quick recap. We said, imagine, it's unlikely, but imagine that you are a big shareholder in your problems. Imagine that the reason you hate work isn't just your boss. Imagine like you have a little part to play in that. And maybe if you just change your outlook a little bit, it would get better. Imagine when it comes to dating in this city, imagine that there actually are a few men and there actually are a few women and the problem isn't just them, it's that you just attract them. Just imagine in some area of your relationships, maybe with your family, they're not all possessed. I mean, they might be, but imagine that they're not. Imagine there's something about you. And imagine, and this is where we're going to go today, imagine that when it comes to your finances, the reason that you are sucking air like this, the reason that you're not able to be generous, the reason that you have so much debt, imagine that it's not just the economy and your salary. Imagine it's you. Now, it's probably not you, but I just thought you should imagine. You know, there was a, <clears throat> a friend of mine reminded me that there's a story that was told about the Times, the London Times, 
at one point early in the 1900s, they reached out to all the influencers and authors and all the kind of important people, and uh, they posed this question saying, what's wrong with the world today? And there's an a author and preacher by the name of G.K. Chesterton. Some of his work will last for millennials. It's so profound. And G.K. Chesterton wrote back to them, and he wrote, Dear sir, I am. Yours sincerely, G.K. Chesterton. Taylor Swift and G.K. Chesterton think they're the problem. Perhaps, maybe we are too. But today... I'm going to talk about how you change, especially in the area of finances. Now, here's the bad news. I'm talking about money. Here's the good news. I am not going to ask you for a single cent. You can utterly relax. This is all about money for you, not for me. Imagine that. You are free. It's going to be fun. Don't worry about it. Well, fun is a strong word, but it is going to be good, and it is not going to result in you giving me more. Here's the good news. We can change. And, and what we said in the first week was there is a process to change and a power to change. If you've been a Christian for a long time, you've experienced the power to change. Jesus touches your heart and stuff just moves. And you can literally feel him changing you from the inside out. But here's, if you're a Christian, what you need to know. If you don't have the process, if you just have the power, your moment will never turn into momentum. That's actually quite tweetable. Your, your moment won't translate into momentum. You won't continue changing. You'll have the awful down moment, or you'll have the, oh, wow, God is so good moment, or you'll have the, man, God provided for me, man, God gave me strength, but it won't result in changed life. And all the non-Christians will look at you and go, wow, it looked like you had some amazing LSD type experience, but you're still the same. The thing that God gives us is he gives us power to literally change our lives, and he gives us process. And so today I'm going to try and unpack both those things in the area of finances. And I'm going to dive into the scripture from Matthew 6. Now, last week we spoke into emotions, this week finances, and next week contentment. But here's how Matthew 6 goes. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasure in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Because wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. Now, if you've been in this church, I've spoken about this before. When Jesus talks about your I being the light of your body or the lamp of your body. There's, there's another text in the Old Testament which says your eyes are the windows to your soul. So here's how Jewish thought worked. They felt like you could look at a person and you could look into their eyes. And as you looked into their eyes, you could see the state of their heart coming out of them. And you kind of know this because you look into some people's eyes and you just see a twinkle. And you just go like, life is coming out of them. They've got light eyes. And you look at some other people, and you need to go sleep. You know what it's like to look at a person who has dark eyes. Who it feels like they are slowly somehow sucking the life out of your bones and absorbing it through their eyes into the dark hole. You know what that feels like. You know light eyes and dark eyes. And so this writer of the scripture, <clears throat> well, Jesus is speaking, he's, he's going... Be a light-eyed dude. Be a giver. Be someone who has life inside of you that spills out of you. Don't be the dark-eyed dude. Don't be the taker. Don't be the person who is so filled with greed and stress and, and anxiety and scheming that you feel like... <laughs> she killed me with her eyes. 
Don't be that person. Be light eyes. Now, what Jesus is doing here is he is starting the conversation with who do you want to become? Do you want to become dark eyes dude or do you want to become light eyes dude? We're going we're gonna to talk about, we're going to actually take a moment and, and, and define who you want to become when it comes especially to finances. You know, this, this girl, Sam, she was utterly remarkable. She, one of the stories her parents told me was their house started off as a house, and when Stan, Sam started to reach her teenage years, it became a hostel. And then she's, the, the mom was telling me how when, um, when Sam went to Varsity, the one day she phones her mom up, and now their house is a hostel, and, and she phones up her mom and says, um, Mom, I've got two friends. Uh, they need a place to stay. They're from Israel. And anyway, so the mom says, okay, cool, tell them to come in, they can stay, how long are they staying for? Five days, they just need a place to sleep, they'll sort their food out, whatever. So anyway, these Israelis come in, they stay, if you're from Israel, bless you. And anyway, they, they hang out, sleep on the couch, they, the parents called them the couch surfers, they just kind of surfed and hung out on the couch. And, uh, and anyway, day two or three, Sam phones and, and says, so what are they like? So mom says, what do you mean, what are they like? Don't you know them? No, I just saw them on, inter- on, uh, on the internet. I thought they need a place to stay. You know the thing about her? You spend a moment with that girl, and light and life and generosity just came out of her. And if you want to become that kind of person, what we said in the first week is, you, you have to decide who before do. When God wants to change a person, he often changes his name first. Abram, exalted father. He changes to Abraham, father of multitude. He takes Sarah and he, uh, Sarai and changes her name to Sarah. He takes Peter. His first name was Simon. Simon means reed floating around in the wind. And he changes his name to Peter, the rock on which I'll build my church. Even a person like Jabez, his name means one who causes pain. Jabez realizes I've got a problem because my label is affecting my legacy. So he prays this prayer, Lord, let me not cause pain. You see, in in patriarchal thought, they know Israel, the name Israel, it came from Jacob, which means deceiver. When God wants to change the deceiver, he changes his name. He changes his who so that he can change his do. The whole message that we're trying to get across is if you want to change, you have to change your who. You have to work out what do I want my light eyes to look like? Because you know what you don't want your life to look like. You know what you don't want to be known for when it gets time for your funeral. You don't want people to say, man, they were such scrooges. Man, they were just so bad with money. Man, they just bummed off all their family and all their friends. You know this. You don't want to become a certain person. You want to become... Someone who, say, who people say, man, when my marriage was at its absolute worst, those guys put a, they put a roof over our heads. Man, they, ha- they hardly had two cents to scrub together, but they would take their shirt off to give to you. Man, those people, they were just so wise when it came to finances that whenever I was around them, I felt like they just taught me a different way. You, you know you want to become that person. Now, here's the thing. If you don't get intentional about your who, what begins to happen is your picture of the lifestyle you need to live or the business you need to have, the way you need to live your life, the, the way you spend your money will send you on an unintentional dark eyes trajectory. So I want to give you 
a moment to work out your who. I don't know where Tom is, but I, I haven't given him the slide. But we, we said, so take out your phones quickly. In this church, we actually mean business. We actually need you to do some work. I want you to just take out your phone and fill this in. Paint the picture. For the end of your life, I would like to be known as. What is the thing? When it comes to your relationship with money, I'd like to be known as wise. I'd like to be known as rich, uh, maybe. I'd like to be known as generous. I'd like to be known as dependable. What, what is your, I'd like to be known as? When the people I care about think of me, I want them to remember If I achieve something, it will have been a significant life. Just jot down some words. Sia says, I have to say it again. I think you're smarter than that, but I will. Paint the picture of the end of your life. I would like to be known as, when the people I care about think about me, I want them to remember what. If I achieve something, we write it down, it will have been a significant life. You know what I love about the difference between men and women? Women are writing so many words. You're writing paragraphs. There's description everywhere. Men are somewhere between uh, I like me the way I am and two words. That's what's going on here. You know, I, I have, I've honestly, from the moment we started the series, I have just been practicing this. Who do I want to become? writing down things, tweaking it, changing. It has been so good for me. It'll be so good for you. Okay, so first thing, if you want to change, you have to work out who before do because identity always informs destiny. Your who, you get your who wrong or you don't do the who, do will not happen. You'll do it for two months and then your New Year's resolution will end. Here's the second thing. If you want to change, if you're really serious about change, you have to align your values with who you want to become. So Jesus goes on. And he says this. No one can serve two masters. Because you're going to hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Now you know this. Because every time the tithe conversation comes up. You hate the church. No, or you love it. Like it's polarity. It forces you into, man, I'm ant for this all. Ah, you greedy bunch. Like this is what goes on inside of us. And, and let me just say this. When I, whenever I talk about money and Jesus, I have struggled with what Jesus has to say about money for the 23 years that I've been a Christian. It is hard to listen to a homeless person tell you what to do with your money. Jesus is so hardcore. And it's just so hard. But he's just right. Okay, so he starts this thing off. And he goes, you can't serve God, a person, God, and you can't, and the, the actual word is mammon. And the, the prefix is a personality. So you can't serve the person of God and you can't serve the person of mammon because the Jews understood mammon to be a spirit. So you're going to get caught in these two. And if you want to become light eyes, you have to serve God. Because if you land up serving mammon and living for mammon, you're on a trajectory to dark eyes. This is what he's saying. And then he goes, here's a diagnostic. This is how you know which way are you going? That is why I tell you not to worry. 
And isn't it so easy not to worry? <laughs> As the petrol price goes up and fuel goes up. And he says, don't worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single rand to your debt? A single moment to your life. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as they are, as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? This is how you know that you're in a trajectory towards dark eyes. Worry, anxiety, scheming, hustling, fighting for promotion is your life. Here's how you know you're in a trajectory towards light eyes. Peace and faith. See, notice what he doesn't say. I mean, it's, it's frustrating that he doesn't say this, but he doesn't say this. He doesn't say, you know how you can be free. Because let's face it, you and I, the one thing we want to be is free from worry. Uh, it doesn't matter how wealthy you are, you and I want to be free from worry. Notice what he doesn't say about being free from worry. He doesn't go, this is how you get free from worry. Pay off all your debt land up with an RA that is so big, like your family and your family's family can live off it. He doesn't say, get a job in this space with this kind of income, and then you will be free from worry. It's frustrating, because that would make sense. He goes, no, no, no. The way you get free from worry is faith. Faith? Yeah. He says, why do you have so little faith? I'm going to trick you. I could tell you so many stories about the provision of God. In fact, because my life exists in that space, I'm embarrassed a lot of the time of the provision of God over my life. I have been provided cars. Even when I haven't asked for them, I have felt so uncomfortable with how much I've been blessed. I've had deposits on homes being paid. I, I have lived in the provision of God, honestly, to ways in which it's embarrassing. I've gone on overseas holidays. I've just experienced the blessing of God. And I can tell you stories about the provision of God in this church and provision of God from people who've come to me and said, please give this to this person and please give that. To them. I've, I've seen it in incredible ways. But that's not what I want to talk about when I'm talking about faith. I want to talk about a different kind. I want to talk about the faith to go without. You know, we fasted a few weeks ago, three times. Some of you reminded me a lot that this was the third time we were fasting. <laughs> Do you remember that feeling of going without? But you got so much. I want to talk about fasting and going without because, because money is an emotional deal. Yeah? Our spending, it's an emotional deal. You know this. Ladies, you know this. I'm just not looking across to the left. <laughs> Imagine we have a father who loves us so much that we could go without that shirt, that lifestyle, that wardrobe, that car, that Whatever. We could become checkers people instead of Woolies people. Oh, we're all checkers people. We, we could. Imagine we could just go without something that our parents had and was common to them, and that was just the way you lived your life. But imagine we, we had faith that though I'm not going to go on that trip, though I'm not going to have that thing, that 
God's grace is enough that I will be full of joy without. Imagine as the rand decomposes. Imagine we have so much faith that we can go, man, I'm going to have to cut back there, there, and there. But God's grace and His joy, I'm, I'm going to have more than enough. Imagine my God can provide all you need according to his riches and glory. And imagine it's not money. You see, I don't think we understand what faith can actually give you access to. But you have all seen poor people who are so much more happy than you. You and I have all experienced going without and yet having so much. He says, why do you have so little faith? Faith that I can give you what you need in this season that may not look the way you want it to. You know, I run a a little group of 30-somethings, 20 20 to 30s. They're just awesome. But I realized that millennials think about money a lot more than dinosaurs. I don't know what it was about when we were growing up, but we just didn't talk about money that much. We didn't think about money that much. We just assumed, I guess. It'll work out. I'm an engineer. It'll be fine. But as I was talking to these millennials, what I realized is they want to become generous. And so what they were saying was, The way we're going to be generous is that we are going to work as hard as we can now. We are going to push our careers forward, our businesses forward, as far as we can so that we can make enough to become generous. To which all the old people went, we tried that. (laughs) And Jesus goes, don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear. These things dominate the thoughts of those with no faith. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Don't worry about, and here's the big word, tomorrow. For tomorrow has enough problems. Today's Trouble is enough for today. You, you want to know how? Because the big question is, how do I become light eyes, dude? Here's how. Live in the present. This little girl, Sam, when she saw you, she would come up to you and engage with her whole heart in the moment. She didn't work out what she, was going to happen next month. It was just in this moment, I'm fully present right here. Becoming the person I want to be right now. You know how she did that? I've got a father in heaven. Now, I want to say to you, I, uh, I, until I was 10, I lived with a mom. And uh, I don't know how many weeks, I hope she's not watching this. I don't know how many weeks we ate mince with green peppers. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, we'd go to Grand's. And then Sunday, we'd mince with green peppers. <laughs> you know what happens when you live without a dad? Is you don't even ask. Because you don't want to put any more pressure on the provider. You don't think. You don't expand your thoughts. You just get through. And my mom was so brave, and she was amazing. And then she got married. And I'd wake up in the morning and have a list. It was actually disgusting. Do you want yogurt and cereal? Do you want grapefruit? Do you want eggs and bacon or eggs and... And I shifted. From living like an orphan... Not quite, but that kind of thinking 
to living with a father who knew my needs and cared so deeply about me that he would provide my needs. And now I am a father. And my kids will have their needs met. And every now and again, I won't give them something because they haven't got the character to hold it. And some of us are judging God by what he hasn't fathered us with, not knowing that we don't have the character to hold it. But you have a heavenly father who will never let you go without your needs. So live in today and take your treasure and use it to shift your heart and become the person you want to become. See, I didn't even ask you for money and you want to give it away. (laughs) There is so much special in this room. Don't you dare let it get dark. Because the world out there needs your special. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we ask you to provide for all our needs according to your riches and glory so that we can get light eyes and live in today. So come and work in our hearts, I pray in Jesus' name, and bless your people to shine their special. Amen. Amen. God bless. Lovely being with you.